In this lecture, we'll talk about the anti-spyware configuration. Anti-spyware is another content ID feature that Palo Alto is able to provide. It uses signatures to identify spywares on the network. The way it does this is it matches against signatures. It also can do DNS learning to determine if there's any machines infected with spyware on the network. By default, there are two anti-spyware profiles, the default and then the strict profile. Let's take a look at the difference between the two. The default profile for critical, it takes the default action of the signature. Simple, uh, for high, it takes also default. So basically it takes the default action of all the signatures. So if, if we take a look at all the signatures here, click on show, show all signatures, you can see what the signature default is. If you are going to be using the default policy, you will be subject to the default action that's in the rules and you will not have any control over the action other than take the default if you're using the default policy. It will only alert on DNS signatures. So DNS signatures is basically your clients trying to reach command and control IP addresses which is an indication of the machine infected with a spyware. Let's take a look at the strict. The strict, the difference between the default and strict is strict would do a reset for both client and server in the event of critical, high, medium. Exceptions, the exception tab allows you to make exceptions for signatures that might be false positive for your environment. DNS signatures is set to block. So uh, for DNS signatures in the event of strict, it's set to block. And then you can create your own. So we're gonna go ahead and create an outbound policy. And then we're gonna add rules. There's different categories as well. You can make your policy based on the different category of malware. Is it adware, backdoor, botnet, browser, hijack, data theft, keylogger, networm, peer-to-peer -peer communication, and spyware. So those are the different categories. I basically see spyware as a risk no matter what. So I like to take action against critical, high, and medium of resetting the connection. The actions that you can do are allow, alert, drop, a reset client, a reset server, reset both, and block IP. Block IP is the most intrusive because it's going to block the IP of the client that's infected by spyware. A reset both would be a good option or drop. We'll go ahead and do reset both. You can packet capture the traffic this way. You can do some forensics on it to determine what was the communication between the client and the server. You can do single packet capture or you can do extended packet capture. It's up to you. If you're going to do extended packet capture and you have a lot of traffic in your environment, you might run the risk of consuming too much disk space on your firewall. I'm going to do extended packet capture. So we'll set this policy for critical, high, medium. And then for low and informational, it's better to make the action to be alert. Maybe if you want to investigate further, maybe single packet capture. This way you can determine if this is false positive or not. And then we'll call this low informational. Click OK. Under exceptions, this is where you can make exceptions uh, for signatures that might be triggering falsely for your environment. You can do show all signatures. And you can make exceptions for a signature. And you can see all the signatures here. Uh, there's 122 pages. There's quite a lot of them. You can click on any of them and see the details. Or you can specify to make exception for signature to be allow, for example. This is an exception you can do. Let's say this uh, signature is falsely triggering. 
then you can make it uh, allow. DNS signature. What DNS signatures allows you to do is monitor DNS traffic that is leaving your network and determine if there is any spyware, malware, command and control uh, lookup from clients on your environment. And then you can allow, block. You can block those signatures, you can block those DNS queries, or you can sync hold them. What sync holds allows you to do is send the traffic to a specific IP address in your environment. And this way you can do investigation further on which machine. Typically in the environment, the clients do not query the DNS, public DNS directly. They go through your DNS server. So because of that, you wouldn't know exactly which client was the one that did the DNS query because the DNS query would be coming from your internal DNS server. So in order to get around that, you can sync hole, which means it's going to send the traffic to an internal IP address uh, on your, maybe your IS server, an internal IS server, or uh, maybe on an, an internal server that you can do intelligent things like determining the actual client IP address that was searching for this DNS query that points to a spyware. So sync hole is a very uh, good way of doing this. Enable passive monitoring allows you to, a passive DNS monitoring allows the firewall to passively monitor DNS traffic going across the firewall, determine if there's any DNS matching signature against spyware. You can also do single packet capture or extended packet capture. So we're going to sync hold the IPv4 to an IP address, and then we're going to sync hold to an IP address on the firewall. So 10.1.1.1, and uh, this is going to be a loopback address that we're going to create on the firewall. We're going to go to network, loopback, we'll add the loopback address, loopback1, and then we'll specify this to be in the virtual router default and then the security zone trust and give it an IP address of 10.1.1.1 slash 32. Uh, we'll go ahead and put this in a new security zone. I will call this zone sinkhole. This way we can uh, create a rule, a policy on the firewall and th this rule can allow us to alert on the clients that are trying to reach the sinkhole. Okay, we went ahead and created a new zone called sinkhole. And then, if a client machine on the internal network is infected, it's going to try to reach this IP address, which is in the sinkhole security zone. So now we can create a policy. Uh, we'll call this policy something like uh, sinkhole DNS. And then we'll specify the source to be trust, destination to be sinkhole. And then we're going to specify to permit. And this will allow us to log traffic that are trying to reach the sinkhole. So basically what's going to do is the firewall would log the communication between clients and the sinkhole. You can make logics in your syslog server to alert if any of the traffic got received from the rule sinkhole. You can do some intelligent alerting and such. So this will allow us to take another level of action if client on the internal network tries to reach the sinkhole IP address. On this sinkhole IP address, which is an IP address that you send to the client in response for them trying to resolve a malware or spyware site, it will basically send them to the sinkhole and sometimes this uh, client would ping the sinkhole IP address and in any such events that are seen on the monitoring logs on your firewall, you can alert on, you can alert on uh, on uh, if you have uh, if you're forwarding to a syslog server and you want to trigger alert based on receiving such traffic or logs hitting such rule. This creates the anti-spyware security profile. Now we need to apply it to a policy. We're going to go to policies 
and then I will find all the outbound traffic and then add this profile to the list of profiles that the firewall would do content inspection against. So let's find the trust to untrust rules. So trust to untrust allow. So this one will go ahead and add the anti spyware profile. And then when you add it, you would see it here. And then since this is blocked, we don't need to. URL filtering rule. We we'll also need to do the spyware protection. So as we progress through the lectures, we're building this profile, and then I'll show you later on how to group them in a in an easy to manage way. Now that this is done, you're going to go ahead and commit and then commit your changes. In the next lecture, I'll show you how to create a custom spyware signature so you can test, make sure that your anti-spyware is working correctly.